Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 25. Uh, so before we get into anything, uh, we're going to go to Jeremy for the, um, the no-gov license. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT no-gov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at BIPCOT.org. So today we have uh, Donny Giebert, who uh, from the Force to Freedom podcast. Um, he's a regular on our show occasionally. So he's an ex-Army, ex-Navy, uh, 17 years active, two inactive. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the idea that, or the criticism of, um, of anarchism, that it is a utopian, idealistic dream. It'll never happen. Stop trying your... You know, you, you think everybody is, uh, is an angel, you know, you're not living in the real world <laughs> kind of thing. So <laughs> we're going to kind of dissect, take apart and uh, analyze that idea. Um, so so w I, I do get this a lot from people and, and it's kind of funny because um, I think the reason that, and anyway, me, I'll speak for myself, is the reason that I don't trust any politician or bureaucrat or you know government in general is because uh i think it's um it's a mises uh, quote right that uh, he says if you if you um something like if you dis discount you know uh if you if you if, if you discount it man's uh, action by his uh, fallibility then you must also discount you know government entirely something like that <laughs> um that that you know if, if you truly believe that people are fallible then people in power not only will be fallible, but will be even more fallible because the kinds of people that are attracted to power are not, uh, you know, decent, everyday, moral, compassionate sort of people. Because <laughs> those are the people that just want to lead their lives, raise their kids, you know, earn enough money to put food on the table and, uh, you know, be a nice guy, you know. <laughs> not the kind of people that want to subjugate their neighbor or their town or their county or their state <laughs> or even the uh, extreme sociopath that wants to uh, rule over 300 million people that's just not something that uh, normal people want to do you know um, and for this reason I tell people that we have more in common you know as uh, people who live in you know the United States have more in common with people who live in let's say Iran Iraq or Afghanistan than we do with our own political masters <laughs> because in that sense we all basically want the same things you know we are the little people <laughs> we are you know the uh, the tax cattle of every every you know so-called nation state so we all have that in common and, um, <clears throat> and I think that's that's what so that's you know basically you know I think that people are generally good in that sense most people don't want to you know uh, use violence to achieve their goals or you know use theft to uh, get ahead in life <laughs> because most people understand that to be wrong um, so what do you guys think <laughs> well I, I, I the whole idea uh, is I mean it, it does it I get it a lot too and it is pretty funny because that it's a uh, it's one of those things that's like uh, used as a as a mic drop almost by yeah. by statists. You know, they think, oh, you're just you're just you, you just want a utopia, and you know, they it's a <clears throat> it's a word. You know, obviously, in case uh, for people who are just listening to this, uh, we're we're short Dave this week, but uh, I'll throw in some of his words so you don't miss him too much. Um, it's it's I'm not, I'm not know, sexist, it's, but <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say it's a bit of, it's a bit of sophistry. Um, yeah. <laughs> To throw that to throw that word out because it's you know it, it's it's one of those things people throw out and say okay that's you're you're after this impossible dream so we don't even have to consider what you say right, right. Um, without bothering to examine what is being presented because do you know again I, I, like you said you know I'll speak for myself do I want am I looking for a utopia no do I expect a stateless an anarchic you know whatever you want to call it society to be a utopia absolutely not. Um, you know, there's that, that Jefferson quote about what, uh, you know, dangerous freedom and, you know, I, I'd rather, is, is that, that's what, it, you know, I'd, I'd prefer I, dangerous freedom to, uh, the, the, yeah, most people prefer the peace of despotism to the t yeah. tempestuous sea of liberty. Oh, I, oh, that's a, that's a different one I was thinking okay. of, but either way, same, same thing. It's, <laughs> same thing. it's, 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 the, it's the, that's the reverse of it. It's oh, the right, same right, thing right. though. You know, I, you know, I, I know that. You know, obviously, we can't know exactly what will happen in that hypothetical society, but I do have a pretty good idea that absolute freedom comes with it extreme responsibility, and you know, it's not going to be easy. But I'm still willing to work towards that. You know, that still sounds good to me, better than having my life micromanaged by 
uh, local, state, federal, any type of government, anybody else other than myself, you know, governing how I do things uh, does not sit well with me. So I, I would rather deal with the dangers of being free. Um, so it, it, it in no way, you know, is a utopia that at least I'm seeking. I'm, I'm just seeking freedom and to give that to give the same respect to everybody else, to have them let them be as free as they possibly want to be without I imposing or, or aggressing against another. Um, you know, and that's if, if that sounds like a utopia to people, well, then, OK, you can call it a utopia. But it's still, you know, as you started to say, most people everywhere just want to get along. They just want to get by. They just want to be happy. They just want to, you know, like you said, you know, raise their kids, you know, have fun, make friends, you know, get together with family, all these things. Like, that's what most people want. Um, so those people, they don't realize that they're actually after the same thing we are. We're just, we've put we've put the pieces together and we're like, okay, well, yes, we want these things. Why shouldn't we have them? And even if you are to think that it's, you know, it's a pie in the sky dream, because yes, at first glance, I can understand that. I went through that phase too. You know, when I was a minarchist, I, I looked at the anarchists and, 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 and scoffed at them and said, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea, but it can never happen. <laughs> so I, under, I understand when people say that. I really do, because I lived it. I, I was that. I, I, to, I was in their position. Um, but it's a matter of, of looking at it more closely. But, but even, if you, even if it is just a, you know, a pie in the sky to you at the moment, it's still, if, you, if you can still look at that and say, that is ideally what I want, would want, regardless of whether you think it can happen or not, if you can at least be honest enough to say, yes, a society like that, being free, being, interacting voluntarily with people, like, yeah, it's great, it sounds wonderful. Isn't it something we should work towards then? If you can at least agree that much, like why, why would you not work towards it? Even if you think there's a possibility that it can't, doesn't the possibility that it can <laughs> drive you enough to say, right. okay, even if it is a utopia, which like I said, I, I, I think it's, it's silly um, to, to think that because it's, it's not, it, there's a lot of responsibility involved, but even if there's the chance that you could be part of making that happen why wouldn't you want to take that? That's just, that seems insane to me. What, what do you think, Donnie? I, I think that you, you kind of hit something there where, you know, people, uh, people tend to be very lazy. Yeah. And then, and, but I, I can kind of come from this place where I, I, you know, for so many, so many talks that we have with people on, you know, um, uh, it covers such a, a broad number of topics. You start to think that humans are really stupid. Just inherently, there's something <laughs> wrong with them. Like, like you were born to be this <laughs> mooing cow in a field, and all you really want is to chew the cud and never ever think that someday you're going to be a hamburger, ever. <laughs> and that's. It. But the, the more I, the more I'm doing this, the more I'm starting to see how really motivated people are. They're super, super intelligent because how else could somebody literally think of every possible logical fallacy to try and break, to try and just uh, quell this, this idea of chaos in their mind? How does somebody come up with that many fallacies? Like, I don't even remember them all. I have a logicalfallacies.info. I have to reference that thing it's five, six times a week to like, I know that's fallacious, but I don't even... I don't even know which one it is. <laughs> so, so I have to go look it up again, and it's like, oh, that's a weak analogy. And, and it's, like, but, like, it's, like, it's like, you're wrong. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> I, yeah. I know you're wrong, and I'll tell you why in a second. <laughs> I, yep. I, 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 yeah, I saw somebody, uh, they had a meme, and it was, uh, the amount of information it takes to debunk bullshit is, a, is one order of magnitude greater than it takes to produce bullshit. Yes. And they're so right. They're absolutely so right. It, it absolutely, it, yes, it is. It really is perfect. I don't know if it was kind of engineered conference or how they came up with it, but it really, really is just so solid. And the amount of work that people will go to to maintain this little utopia in their own head. They think the system's as good as it's going to get, and they don't want to really examine it. They don't want to go through that because they, I think they inherently know the process is grueling, but at the same time, they recognize that I could just come up with a, re a real quick fallacy and get myself out of this, and they just keep going and going and going and going until at a certain point, you're like, all right, we're totally to the bottom of the list. What do we do now? We've gone through every possible objection, 
And then what is it? They don't even go with fallacy. They go with the self-reinforcing assertion, well, this must be utopian. Yep. And it's like, well, God damn, can you ever pin yourself down to one idea <laughs> and stick with it? And apparently not. It's just going to, we're going to bounce around to maintain that, that chewing of the cud in the brain and just hope it all kind of wish it into the cornfield and hope it goes away. Oh, it's maddening. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think for me, a proof that people are genuinely good hearted is the fact that people want a government. <laughs> and vote <laughs> because people want to help the poor they want to help the sick you know the elderly you know they want to help the children they think you know public education is the best way they think obamacare is the best way <laughs> they think so so it's all with good intentions right so that's the goodness in them coming out however unfortunately you know they don't understand what you know what the extent uh, of you know the effects of their actions when they support a violent institution uh, such as government what that has you know it's it's the unintended yep. consequences right it's it's yep. it's it's the unseen that gets you know really hammered and demolished because people you know lack of economic <laughs> um understanding um you mm -hmm. know just lack of what politics is what voting is what government is you know what is taxation what's a law you know these simple concepts can really save a lot of uh a lot of suffering, you know. It's like um, it's like you can you know save more more lives by taking away pens from politicians than taking away guns from people, <laughs> right? Right. You know. So 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 I think that's for me that's proof that people are genuinely good hearted. They want they want to see a better world. They're just confused and like you said, Donnie, lazy, yeah. and and okay. and ignorant, <laughs> economically ignorant, yeah. and that's unfortunate. Okay. Just a quick cursory look at an idea, but never any look at the method. Right. It's like, oh, this is a great idea, right. and how are we going to bring it to table? Mm -hmm. and, and nobody asks that. It's like, oh, yes, we should feed the poor. Well, we're going to do that by ransacking your house. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, oh, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden the methodology is important when we put you on the hook for it. You just, you didn't want to pay attention to that. It was all about the idea. And a lot of times, you know, I kind of lead off with that in a lot of conversations. It's, I, I don't care what your idea is. Tell me of your method. Mm. Let's have a real conversation. Because cause whatever you, I mean, if I, I said this before, you know, if you want to give, uh, if, if you want to bring the idea you have is a caffeinated dessert for breakfast, then, well, hot, hot damn, we have Starbucks. But what would you think of Starbucks if they were ushering somebody in through the door with a shotgun and telling them they had to go buy a cup of coffee? You, I mean, how long does that idea actually work before people just start walking way around the Starbucks and, and they don't even go near the place? Mm. So, but people don't examine that at all. They're just like, oh, yes, yes, caffeinated dessert for breakfast. Wonderful idea. And, and, they, and that's it. That, that's it. They move on with their day. Let's force it on everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's getting people to to see the force is is usually the tricky part in that, you know. Right. Most, yeah. Yes. Because you know, I mean, when you get into the discussions about that taxation and all that stuff, I mean, just just getting the average person to to grasp and accept the concept that taxation is actually theft because it's it's extort. I mean, it's it's more specifically right. it's extortion, but it, that which is just a form of theft. And I mean, all 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 real quote unquote real crimes are actually versions of theft anyway you know that's the overarching yeah. theme and everything because yeah. e even murder is theft mm -hmm. um but it's, it's getting people to see that because you know when you get into those discussions you end up with uh well uh i pay my taxes because i want to because i want these things and well you know and then try to try to get them to explain well get them to understand rather well what happens if you don't if you decided one day you didn't want to, and then what would happen to you? And you know, get, getting them to that point to understand that. And there's the road, you know, like Donnie was saying, where they just you throw all these, all the just as many fallacies as you can, and you just keep throwing them. Mm -hmm. um, that there, there's a lot that can go from from just in that one argument, just all the way in taking it all the way to the end, because they just keep blocking it out because it's. It's it's tough, you know. I mean, I, as as I said before, I, I I've been there. I know it. <laughs> we all we all do. You know, we all go through that period where you come to these realizations, um, and it and you fight it. Uh, most people, you know, I, I fought it hard. Um, so I understand how people and why people fight it. It still just happens to be frustrating because, of course. You know, we see you meet other people like ourselves on the other side, and it's like, all right, there's more of us. Okay, now we just need to get a few more and a few more. And mm -hmm. when you run your head into the wall, these people, and and then they they, you know, they they throw these these silly non arguments at you 
that are, you know, it's utopian. And, um, you know, I think we actually, we were discussing that a little bit before we started recording about the fact that all forms of government are utopian. Mm. You know, all, all most forms of society that have been tried are a utopia to somebody. That's mm -hmm. why they were tried. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's what it is. It's somebody's version of utopia. So yeah. that's you know e even if you want to consider uh, you know somebody who's who's looking for a stateless society to, to be utopian. Well, okay, you're in the same boat as everybody else. So what, why is that a problem then? You know, there's there's actually to me there's so many ways to defeat that argument. Mm -hmm. um, just with using logic, which of course is is another um, problem because the average statist doesn't. <laughs> really well, grasp yeah. grasp logic um you know the average uh, human doesn't grasp logic they, they don't well, spend any time this is uh, true pa right past basic math they don't really do well, anything yeah. i mean you have to take that course intentionally mm -hmm. in college yes and so yeah i mean a lot of i wouldn't necessarily it's it's inherently statist i'd say it's inherently <laughs> human at least in our society in the empire well, all, to all avoid it well, all, all the people in our empire and everybody else's empire are statists, so. <laughs> well, that's right. well so, but, that's, uh, but, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, but, but no, but you're right. But you're right. It, it, it's just the way things are. And I mean, I, I've said that plenty of times before, um, you know, that that's definitely one of the things that I believe has been purposefully let, left out of the curriculum, as yeah. it were. You know, it's um, actual economics, logic beyond the field of mathematics. Um, real history uh, mm -hmm. and philosophy. Yeah. Those four things are purposefully kept out of people's reach, mm -hmm. or they are degraded and 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 mocked. Per, you know, again, intentionally um, to make it out like you know anybody who takes those things. You know, I mean, I know that's when when I was going to school um, back in the you know eighties and nineties. Uh, when when the the question even of of taking electives like that were offered. They were, you know, just everybody automatically. It was like it was, it was. They were conditioned to be like, no, no, you don't want to take that stuff. You don't want to do that stuff. You don't want to be yeah. involved in that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I never did. And uh, you know, again, I, I understand where people are coming from because it was only a few years back that I started to really reinvestigate all these things and learn what I'd been missing. And you know, and again, now I can I can put the pieces together a lot more quickly because I, I have the tools. But most people don't. Um, but like I said, there's just there's so many ways to attack the, the utopian argument. It, uh, like I said, it, to me, it doesn't really matter which way you go with it. Um, uh, so one of my favorite um, Larkin quotes is um, is basically if enough people you know go out to vote because they want something good to happen, you know that's enough people that could do that thing voluntarily of themselves <laughs> without having a government without having a ruler and you know without extorting everybody else because um you know it's, it's just kind of funny like so many people go out and they support government because they think it's this mythical institution that has magical powers superhuman abilities that you know the common person simply cannot do you know you know we, we will never be able to defeat china or russia or any other you know or al-qaeda or the taliban <laughs> or you know all of these all these boogeymen you know they're not um you know, it's it's completely beyond the capabilities of the average person, right? We need this deity, right? And, th and that's why Larkin always says that that re you know, um, statism is the, is the most dangerous superstition. You know, it is a religion, right? It is it is a deity. You know, it's no longer it's no longer um, divine right of kings. It's now divine right of politicians, <laughs> and people we deify those in uh in you know the representatives in our you know that is that is the modern day you know aristocracy representative democracy and uh and it's just it's just kind of funny how it's evolved and and i think that the natural evolution will be to you know discard this superstition as well you know once we begin to realize you know wait a minute um if i steal from my neighbor that's theft but if i elect someone isn't that also theft <laughs> like when you make that simple um you know connection and then, you know, we tell her, wait a minute, isn't that theft? Like, <laughs> and, and, and the other thing I was going to say is, you know, when somebody says that's utopian, that's basically an insult, right? That's, that's like, that's, a, that's slander right there. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to just, you know, destroy the person by just insulting them. It's basically, you know, saying racist, bigot, or, you know, whatever other, uh, you know, insult you can think of. And, and again, one of my favorite Socrates quotes is, is um, when the debate is lost, slander is the tool of the loser. 
<laughs> because that is yeah. not an argument at all. <laughs> it's utopian. <laughs> no basis in logic, no basis in reason, no facts, no evidence. That's utopian. <laughs> Drop the mic <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> right? So, so one of the one of my personal hatreds is the burden of proof fallacy, and uh, today I'm uh, I'm going to go the other way with it. Uh, I, I kind of got called short notice. Dave's house got literally like Dave's shit got hit by lightning. Oh wow! So uh, I, I got called eight minutes before before Dave was planning on being here, and and the normal chaos gave me you know a, a half hour lead time, but still. Uh, when we were discussing this, it was like, what, is it, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Current events or, or whatnot? So, um, in this, uh, in the utopian theme that we have going here, I've decided to pull up two websites of two of the leading candidates. Now, you would think, if we are not talking about utopianism, you know, the anarchists are utopians. I think bringing up the the two statist frontrunners right now is probably the best way to debunk this uh, utopian theme, <laughs> because. Rather than what we're saying, let's just let's just take the uh, the the oppositional uh, position against the statist and use their own terms, right? So I'm looking at Donald Trump's website and I click on positions, and there is one issue. Now everybody in their mind is drooling and losing their mind over Donald Trump. Either they love him or they hate him, but there's really nobody in the middle. And this clown shoe has spent the home, how knows how much money on this website and it has one issue immigration reform <laughs> that's it that's it so so apparently when when you're not a utopian and you're on the right of this argument you're totally interested in this one trick pony called Donald Trump <laughs> so so you believe that this one guy with with a stated position of immigration reform, he's going to fix it all. You're going to throw you're going to throw your uh, your vote at this guy because he's got his shit so together that his website that's going to touch every human in America <laughs> has immigration reform is the thing that needs to get fixed. The great, well, the, 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 great, the, the great wall of America. As, as <laughs> at which point. At which point, I almost want to pick up the utopian flag and say, God damn, I'm utopian. Hell yes, I'm utopian. I believe that maybe there's more than one issue to be discussed. <laughs> well, right. well, for the, for the people that, that, is a, you know, that, that is a utopian fantasy for them, there, there are those out there that really think that the immigration problem is the biggest problem out there. And, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of the conservatives... Uh, and the neocons, the, those folks, they really believe that you know everything else is pretty much fine, and we just get we just need to get a a Republican back in there, and, and we need to take care of immigration, and everything else will be fine. <laughs> so for them, yeah. the, so for them, I guess that would be their utopian candidate. Makes sense. So yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's it's really hilarious, you know, that you know all we need, we just need a wall, right? That's going to solve our problem. <laughs> we just need a wall. And the fact that Mexico is not willing to pay for this, that's the real problem. Yes. <laughs> that's going to solve, you know, that's going to solve the national debt. That's going to solve, you know, kids, can, they, they have no skills when they come out of government schools. That's going to solve, you know, the warm, you know, that's going to solve the, you know, <laughs> the, you know, welfare state and people, the permanent underclass. And that's going <laughs> to, that's going to solve, that's going to solve right. it all. You know, the great wall of America, that's what we need. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, what's also funny about that is, is that, you know, the reason that people don't like, um, you know, when, you know, quote unquote, illegals coming into the country and, and uh, you know, doing whatever they do is basically for statist reasons. It's kind of funny. Like they don't pay taxes, they don't contribute to this, <laughs> right? It's all for right. statist reasons. They get wealth. They get welfare. Right. Yeah. Subsidized housing. I mean, I mean, it is crappy, but but it's all for statist reasons. Like, but but then you look at you know, do they work? Well, yes, they do work. <laughs> do they do the jobs that you know? Most, are are, are, most, neuro, are neurosurgeons complaining about the immigrants? No, <laughs> their job is not is not uh, you know endangered. <laughs> And and really, one of my favorite quotes by uh, the comedian Doug Stanhope is like, you know, if you if you feel threatened that your job is going to be taken away by a guy who comes in here with no shoes, with ripped pants, with no shirt, doesn't speak the language, and came came here like on a banana truck, if you feel threatened that he's going to take your job, maybe just maybe. <laughs> 
you have a shitty job <laughs> and you, t- you need to work on your own skills <laughs> and it's not his problem, it's your problem. <laughs> so. I, I like to point out the absurdity that uh, when you look up the, the definition of anarchy and monarchy, like they both come from the Greek, anarchy is no rulers, monarchy is one ruler. Yet, in, the, in almost every dictionary you look for, you will find that anarchy is usually listed as a synonym for chaos, bedlam, some sort of, you know, fire and chunks of concrete are falling from the sky and, uh, you know, all your hair is falling out and you're bleeding tears and, okay, fine. You go look at monarchy and it is uh, a king. <laughs> now, right. now, now, what kind of absurdity do you have to believe that the difference between complete and utter bedlam and absolute utopia is one fucking guy? Are, are you shitting me? <laughs> this doesn't work in any. It, this doesn't work in a bar room, let alone in a country. Right. Like, come on, one guy. So, I mean, you kind of have to, uh, you know, at some point, something's got to catch up where you where you start maybe thinking. There's a chance I'm getting propagandized here that a certain concept is really bad for rulers. Not necessarily for you, but it's really bad for this preferred group of people who like to take charge of things and live, at, you know, basically at the expense of you. Nobody really takes that, that basic economic look. Hey, we've just added a bunch of middlemen, and they don't really add to the process or do anything. Mm-hmm. They, they just hire guys with guns to harass people who are actually producing something inherently making it more expensive. Mm-hmm. But yeah. just, re- just remember, that one guy, he's making the difference. Not only is that one guy going to make a difference, but he's going to do it with one issue and one wall. <laughs> right. They're like, come on. I actually heard, I can't remember <laughs> where I was. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in person, too, and it wasn't an online conversation, which is usually all I have, <laughs> because I'm either, I'm either walking dogs or, or in my house. Um, but uh, the, who, somebody actually said to me that that not only did they want, you know, were they, you know, obviously they had a problem with immigrant, you know, illegal immigrants and all that stuff, but they actually wanted a wall like China. (laughs) Like they want, they wanted, they, they thought there should be a great, they literally thought there should be a great wall. Somebody stole, somebody stole my line, you say? Yes, exactly. (laughs) I, but that's why I I chuckled when you said that before, because somebody actually said that to me within the last week or so. And I was like, I was in a hurry, so I did not get to, because I, for, I mean, my instantaneous re- reaction was just to stare at him blankly um, and watch my watch my own eyes, you know, my own brain explode out of my head. <laughs> yeah. um, but when, because I wanted to say, I wanted to say like so many things like, who's paying for this damn wall and why do you, like, do you really think like it's so ridiculous, but there's actually, there really are people out there that think these things. It's scary. And that's what, that's who, that's who Trump's, that's who Trump's playing to. Yeah. He, you know, because he's not, I mean, what else does he have other than his charisma and his popularity because he's been a figure in TV and in the social circles for, what, 30-something years now at this point? You know, since the mid, what, since the mid-80s, that's when he came to prominence, as, as I remember, somewhere in there, early 80s maybe? Mm-hmm. Um, so he's been, he's been in the public spheres for a long time. Like, other than that, what else does he really have going for him? You know, he wants to run the country like a business. All right, Romney tried that a couple of years ago. Didn't go so well for him. Now, did <laughs> and, um, and I quote the statist George Patton, General George Patton, fixed fortifications are monuments to man's stupidity. And this guy's running for president on a wall. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let that sink in, statists. Let it sink in. What we need, we need pyramids. That's what we need. Is if we have a couple of pyramids, right? The poor are going to be fed. Yes. <laughs> the sick will be taken. And it needs, <laughs> and it needs to be built with Mexican slave labor. That's what we need on this pyramid. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. It's. Uh... <laughs> okay. So. Go ahead, go so ahead, to go give ahead. the so to give the statists a, a little bit of credit, now I'm looking at Bernie Sanders' website, and Bernie has listed ten issues. Nice, ten. So let's let's not you know pretend that Bernie's a clown shoe like Donald Trump, and and, and maybe he's kind of got some of at least. Now he might not know what he's talking about, but at least he has a volume. <laughs> he has a very good volume of things to talk about. He's not a one trick pony. So let's give Bernie a let let's give him a little bit of credit. 
And and one of the one of the first ones on his website is the second one is getting big money out of politics. Where is he getting his money from? <laughs> and <laughs> just like that, just like that, he's got a picture of him putting himself an arm around what appears to be a, a normal guy wearing a ball cap. And and the and the tagline is get big money out of politics. And I don't think Bernie Sanders has got less than $100 billion in his war chest right now. <laughs> right now, and the vast majority of it has come from yeah. every big moneyed interest across the planet. Has he, yeah, exactly. Has he, has he turned down any of that big money? And, and how, many, how many years has he been in the Senate now? I don't even know. I, I, I only remember yeah. Decades, him. Right? Yeah, I know. I know he's been there a while. I just I only remember like him becoming coming to prominence for me like back in I don't know I guess the oh seven oh eight somewhere around there when I finally started really paying attention. So, um, but yeah, how much money has he has he turned down from uh, big money? <laughs> to give him credit, he's been singing the same tune for like thirty years. The same way you could go back into the eighties and you could get clips of Ron Paul being a flagrant libertarian in the middle of the 80s when like it wasn't even cool sure you can go back and you could find bernie being a balls out socialist in the middle of the 80s when it wasn't cool <laughs> so we'll give him the consistency card and we'll give him the fact that he's not a one-trick pony okay fair enough What's, yeah. what, what do you got next <laughs> but, then, but then when we start getting into a living wage Oh. Well, what does that even mean? <laughs> yes. What does that let's, mean? Let's define about... those terms. Yeah, when you, when you, when you try right. to pin them down to that short, short, yeah, short, one of, one of short circus a status mind. Ask them that question right away. Define right. that term. Right. What is a living wage? And I got a strange feeling that what Donald Trump considers a living wage is a hell of a lot different than what <laughs> we consider a living wage, especially because the picture that comes to mind for Donald Trump is. His whichever wife he's on right now with her with her superb set of tits that look like they were installed by Picasso, <laughs> and the picture is taken while she's half naked on his private jet. Nice. So I'm gonna say that that this living wage term seems to be a a floating, nebulous, not real term made up by people who are trying to sell you an agenda completely based on nothingness because. Nobody under this living wage is going to be able to afford those tits on that plane, <laughs> except for Donald. And I'm sure that if you were to ask him if he's willing to live without either, you're going to get an emphatic no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so Bernie Sanders, well, one thing I'll say about him is that um, he, I think he's... Uh, uh, kind of exploiting the the anti-rich sentiment that I think was generated out of the um, uh, the bailouts, you know, 2008, 2009 bailouts, because I think most people um, did not want to bail out like <clears throat> you know these huge banks and you know these you know special interest groups. Most people did not want to do that. I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I could say that, and and so. And and of course, as a result, you know the Occupy Wall Street people. So so I think there's a, just a general anti-rich sentiment that you know people have, and and so you know the evil rich co evil corporations, and you know you know all rich people are you know across the board just you know stealing from the poor, and if they got rich, they, it's only because they stole from people. Um, and so you know I think he, Bernie Sanders he's doing a pretty good job of exploiting that sentiment. He's riding that anti-rich wave. You know, to the socialist utopia, which is going to be a cliff. <laughs> a cliff off Danilo, the edge. <laughs> Danilo, would you be implying that one of the 10 issues on Bernie's website is reforming Wall Street? I think you are. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Give that man a prize. <laughs> I, I think you hit that one right on the head. And, and I think the fun part you have to take a, take a recognize, Mr. Statist, is that there is no reforming Wall Street because the people who formed it are the same people who plan to reform it. Yes. So, so do you want to trust the same group of assholes who fucked it up so well the first time that they super, super duper promised to not fuck it up again while taking all of their money for their campaigns? Best of luck with that, Mr. Utopian. Best of luck. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the that's the vicious cycle. Of course, they want to. 
<laughs> we just we just need to replace some people and it'll all be better. What about all the mil- what about all the thousands that are still there behind the scenes? Oh no, we don't have to worry about them. We're just going to keep replacing them. <laughs> One of these sets of people will work. <laughs> but but where the but where the utopians? <laughs> and before I, before I close this web page, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at the real family value section because I read the whole thing top to bottom. I did not see the word proletariat once. <laughs> so I'm going to say that Bernie's a little disingenuous about his socialism because he's really not even using the proper terms to define his own shit. <laughs> well, he's, I, I mean, what, he, what, he, he, used to, he used to consider himself and openly be a democratic socialist, he would say, right? And he's, he's straight away from using that term. And so far, much of what I've read um, from socialist circles has been most socialists disown him and say he's not even a fucking socialist. Oh, really? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, you know, that, that could just be, you know, that could just be the disillusioned people that really keep insisting well it just hasn't been done correctly um you know which is funny because they're also the same people that if they will acknowledge that certain anarchist societies have been tried and been successful to certain extents for certain periods of time they'll say well they didn't work so it's like right but why is your system because it wasn't tried right any better Mm -hmm. you know again going back to everything's a utopia of some sorts to somebody Mm -hmm. if you want to it's 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 usually a utopia from the perspective of the person looking on not the actual person you know if you want to look at that that that, that's what people think is their ideal even if they even if they believe it's there will be problems with it, you know, that you'll have to deal with. The person looking from the outside will still say, well, that's their utopia. So again, everything can be a utopia to somebody, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's not their own utopia, it could be somebody else's utopia. So it's such, you know, as Donnie said, it's one of those, it's, you know, it's, it's a nebulous thing, just like so, just like so many other things. It's the, you know, people, people like Bernie, whether they are socialist or not, or, or progressives, whatever they want to call themselves, um, you know, status of that variety, uh, they love to throw out these this, this subjective terminology, but they do it with the with the passion behind it and the and the feels behind it. So people latch onto it like these are objective truths they're throwing around, and that it's all you know. Well, of course they they say it is. You know, you know it's the rich. Um, you know, well define rich no 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 it's just the rich no yeah okay rich okay what is it the 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 rankings that came out last year um i remember reading about that when people talk you know the whole in here with the occupy that was mentioned before what there was the you know the the one percent versus the 99 percent well according to you know the world indexes or whatever you know quasi-government organizations that put these numbers out or even some of the private ones that, that look look into these things. I mean, they say, I think actually anybody making over, was it 35,000 or maybe 38,000 in, in worldwide terms is considered a 1%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> like <that. laughs> so like, like <laughs> if you make over $35,000, give you the benefit of the doubt, 40,000. If you make over $40,000 a year, you're in the one percent. So, they, so they should, shut they, the fuck they, they up. They change their name. We are the one percent. We are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But that's but that's the point. Like, like so it's, it's but it's so rich is a subjective term. You right. just hurl that around. Right. People, you know, yeah. like like you said, Donnie. They're just they're giving you ideas. They're not giving you methodology because if they get into the methodology about anything, you would. Unless you're a complete idiot or just going to be a complete stubborn asshole, you're not going to have a choice but to recognize that. Oh yeah, there's no there's no way to really quantify that the way it's being said and the way it's being presented. Like it's it just it's nothing. It means nothing. It 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 can mean anybody to anything to any to any any time any place like whatever. Depending on the circumstance, it means something to somebody else. So just throwing it around and attacking these people does nothing. Um, you know, I mean, we've talked about it before. The 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 people that the 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 ones that the people consider to be the quote unquote one percent here, you know, the big corporations, yeah, a lot of the bigger ones got plenty of help from government along the way, and they've been working hand, says you know, in this, it was quasi fascistic, and it's still, I guess, it still is because there's so many other elements of, you know, socialism and communism and every every other branch of mm-hmm. of, of of that of statism in, in that end of the pool, uh, that uh, that's going that's been going on here for so long. Uh, but it's it's been there, and 
you know, so so those people, yes, th those corporations, yes, they're they're part of that one percent you want to hate, and they've gotten help. And in a free society, they wouldn't survive. But one these of my oh, go ahead, Danny. Sorry. One of my favorite analogies is when you hear democratic socialist, you should hear child rapist. <laughs> Because <laughs> when you take when you take the democratic part off a of socialist, it's like taking the, taking the word child off of rapist. Because you because democracy is pretty childish and socialism is pretty rapey. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's like my favorite analogy of Bernie Sanders that I ever heard. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, that's funny. So so one thing that I, I uh, you know Jeremy, I was good about the rich, you know, and I would go further. Uh, you know, I would say like define rich what is rich you know how much do you make do you, do you consider yourself rich no okay so how much is rich <laughs> how much does somebody have to make to be considered rich and so whatever they say then you're like okay so just one dollar less is not rich so that's moral <laughs> and then after that it's immoral to be rich and you should be you know you're you're the uh, you know the evil wicked part of society you should be taxed to hell and you should you know <laughs> you should pay for the rest of us and um uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It's not logically consistent, and and not only that, I think I think most um, most of the you know the upper uh, income bracket people already do pay the most amount of taxes. Like compared to you know, um, <laughs> I, I don't even you know it's like yeah like the top one percent, the top ten percent. You know they pay enormous enormous amount of taxes. You know, um, and com compared to everyone else, you know, it's, it, it's kind of funny. These people who are, you know, most people take advantage of, you know, government benefits, welfare, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, all these social security, you know, and they're, they're always the ones to, to, <laughs> you know, tax the rich, you know, steal more, steal more from them. <laughs> and, and they're like, well, you're already benefiting from their theft and you want more like, 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 right. like you, you can't, you know, you, first of all, you're not even producing, you're, you're, you're just benefiting from, you know, stolen loot and you want, you want more theft. Right. And, and, you know, and, and then you think about the, you know, the economic incentives of that, like, what is, what is the incentive of somebody, the more money they make, the more stolen from them, is there incentive to produce more or to produce less? Right. Like, like, you know, like, like the analogy of, you know, if, if, uh, you know, the tax on cigarettes, tries to discourage buying cigarettes, <laughs> what does the income tax do? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Same sort of thing, which is the whole idea of, you know, people moving their, you know, closing down their plans, going overseas, opening up evil sweatshops, right? And, or going to tax havens, you know. Why do people want to do that? They want to keep their money. What a bright idea, you know. <laughs> if I make my money, I want to keep my money. And, and actually, that reminds me of a, a Thomas Sowell quote, which I really like. Is like, I never understood how... Um, you know, keeping your money, what you, the money that you earn is considered greedy, but stealing other people's money is not greedy. <laughs> I love that. So. I think there's an argument that could be made that there is absolutely no such thing as greed. There's envy parading itself around as altruism, but there really is no greed. Mm. It's usually somebody like, if I had all that money, this is what I would do with it. But beyond that, what is it? It's just somebody who's making his own money and not giving it to other people. Yeah, and and uh, and even if there was somebody like that would you know amass all this you know great wealth, I mean, there, I think there really is no way that people could benefit from that person, right? They're go they're going to need you know you know they're going to buy you know enormous mansion. Let's say they're going to have a jet, they're going to have a yacht. Let's say they're going to have maids, they're going to have cooks, they're going to have assistants and butlers. They're going to you know they're going to they're going to they're going to need a big lands you know uh, you know landscaping. Let's say they're going to you know hire people. So they, you know there's an enormous amount of people benefiting from that. even if they even if they put in the bank, you know, still the bank is, you know, theoretically, you know, not fractional reserve lending, but loaning out their money to other people who are using their money. So there really is no way for a rich person to not benefit other people. That's that's the other thing I like to point out. Stimulus. <laughs> Man. <laughs> real, real stimulus, though. Um, right. You know, not 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 the stuff we get. We get fed, um, but but yeah, that well, of course, because again, the the the, peop, the 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 type of people that 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 attack these individuals that, that they classify as rich and and don't think they're either, either don't think they're earning it, you know, don't think they've earned it, or for whatever for whatever the reason is, they don't they they don't take those things into account to begin with. That's why they that's why they're it's, it's so easy for them to hate them because they're just this nebulous term. They don't look at them as people that actually provide a service for other people no matter what they do. Just like as you described, it does it those things don't click with them. It's the same same reason they hate the CEOs because they don't or you know oh, or the owners of the, or or just an owner of a company who's who's you know 
the, the, who's you know owns the means of production and is profit you know is, is 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 stealing money from his workers and exploiting the hell out of them as any good communist will tell you <laughs> um, but they they're the, 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 these people they don't see that they because that's what they think they they hear these terms they they know they're they they, they it's a jealous it is it's a jealousy thing on mm, some level yeah. they're 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 mad that these people have more than them and is it mm -hmm. you know do do some people use unscrupulous terms yes as i was talking about before with the you know the bigger corporations that have gotten help from government the whole way or you know the whole way and that's how they built themselves up yeah people like that exist but there's plenty of other people that have started companies from the ground up. It was just like, you know, them and their wife or just them or whatever, like building this thing from when they were like in their 20s. And they build it up into this giant corp, you know, into this giant corporation and they employ all these people and they do all these things. But they don't, they don't, you know, people just, they, they live in this box where it's just like, oh, these jobs already existed. So they're just, they're just paying people now. It's like, no, you forget about all the work they put in to get up to that point. Sure. That's, that's why they're rich. Oh, yeah. that's, why, that's, why they're, that's why they have more money than you. They put in more hours than you will ever, than you've, than you've probably put in in any of jobs you've had all together in your life just to get this thing off the ground. You know, mm -hmm. There's so many people out there that are like that. I mean, I'm somebody like that to a very small degree, but you know, I took my company from absolutely nothing. I found a need in the market. I took a shot. 10 years later, I'm still doing pretty well for myself, you know, like, and I've employed people on and off through the years and only because I need to support my kids right now do I not employ anybody. Um, but I'm still, you know, I still do, I still do, even on a small scale, I do things that I require services or products from other people that are like, as you know, you were describing, you know, that are benefiting from me, giving them my money because I need stuff for my business now. So it's like, but people don't see that. They just, they think in this, they have this tunnel vision. It's like, okay, we're told to hate the rich. Okay. We don't want to think about anything about them. We don't want to think about what they did to get there or what it's just, they're rich. They have more money than us. We need to take them down. It's like, it's, it's the whole, it's the whole thing of, you know, they'd rather be, they'd rather be, um, together in misery than, you know, apart in, in uh, you know, or how's that thing go? I now just totally, I totally butchered. I was gonna paraphrase it and then I butchered even more. But you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> there's there's a YouTube channel called Economics. It's E with it's like a small E yeah, and then yeah, a big. Yeah, I know e that e guy. I tried to interview yeah. that guy, David Angelo. Like the guy turned he's me down. Awesome. <laughs> the guy, he's he's, like, he's awesome. too busy. Well, <laughs> and, and I can believe that he's got like a show going with uh, yeah, Comedy Central, Central. Or something yeah, like that. yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, but he did a response video to that video where it's like, this is what the tax, uh, tax burden looks like. Yeah. And, you know, this is what you think. And he did a response video to it that is just glaringly, um, it shows just how bad it really is. And, and it kind of needed to be said that a lot of people got behind this video and they thought it was like a big deal. And, and I, I don't understand why, uh, why people really get into this this class warfare gig. I mean, it's, it's straight up Marxism. The, the class warfare gig is just straight up Marxism, but yeah. um, I, I, I would recommend that, uh, that little economic series for anybody uh, to go ahead and watch. But if you're not going to do that, Henry Hazlitt's uh, economics in one lesson, so many of these, uh, these issues that people are, that, that Sanders and Trump and anybody else is going to parade across the political uh, parade field. They, uh, they're really just nonsense. I mean, we're not even talking, oh, by the strict interpretation of Austrian economics, this is nonsense. We're talking, this is pure bunk by anybody's, anybody's understanding of economics. <laughs> that what, economics 101 gets bastardized by politicians. We don't have to talk about 406. <laughs> right, right, at, right, right at the baseline 101, you know, supply and demand gets violated with the law, with the uh, minimum wage. Mm -hmm. It's screwing yep. everybody it touches. It's screwing the employers. It's screwing the employees. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't think that, it's just because you're economically ignorant. You wouldn't be alone, and I'm not busting your balls, but goddamn, you really have to go learn these things because if you don't, you're going to be pandering to somebody else's puppetry every day for the rest of your life. Well said. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to you know, preface my uh, uh, response with... Um, Saying that I'm supporting the uh, the representative in t 2016 on the platform of uh, breaking up Jeremy's evil m monopolistic uh, dog walking <laughs> campaign. <laughs> Jeremy right. has been cornering the market for far too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> we established that I think in the last episode, right? It's monopolistic yeah. competition, the yes. monopoly of Jeremy's style of dog walking. <laughs> That's right. I, I, do I, do, have, I do hold do a monopoly on that in my in my in my area. 
Do you have a license to walk dogs? How do I know you're upholding health codes? Do you have a pooper scooper? How big is your pooper scooper of regulation size? We've we've actually we've actually discussed that too. I actually don't have a license because there is no such yeah, license. That was the funniest thing. <laughs> but I actually did seek one out when I first started my business. It's amazing that's, how hard you did. It's that's how yeah, it's that's how much of a good little statist I was. That's I kept amazing. asking to make sure there wasn't a license that I wasn't being told about because I was willing to pay for it. Like I was proudly telling them, I'm willing to pay money. Do I have your permission just, to do this? Just do give I me the license. <laughs> and now, and now that's one of the only reasons that I that I'm still I haven't made a Jeremy sized uh, shaped impression out my front door on the way to another area at this point is because I can still get away without being that regulated in my business because everything else is regulated up and I'm regulated up the ass in every other <laughs> in, <laughs> and in every other orifice in here in New York. So, <laughs> no, it's um, just amazing. You were inviting more <laughs> and they said, no, 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 we're not regulating I, you. <laughs> again, again, that was 10 years ago. Amazing. I was, I was, I was at least six years away from all of this. Wow. So, I had no idea, you know. You know, I, I, that's why I dissolved my LLC finally too. And I would not, you know, I, I went, I proudly went out and got that. I made sure I had that too. I did everything by the right, book. Right, right, right. But uh, you know, so many things I wouldn't have done. But, uh, yeah, you know, actually, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. You know, saying talking about you know legality and licensure. When um, <clears throat> you know, I think there was a there was a meme I saw. It's like it's like that awkward moment when. You're talking about natural rights, and somebody and people mention laws. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, I was at the park today to, you know, to me with the kids out there at the park, and we were on the beach, and and one of the kids was walking, in, uh, you know, putting his feet in the water, and it wasn't really a regular beach; it was like all these big rocks. And then this woman I was with, she's like, "Is that legal?" Oh. <laughs> I'm like, "He's just in the water with his feet. Like, what are you talking about?" I'm, like, I'm more concerned if he slips. I don't care if it's legal. <laughs> I'm more concerned if he slips because I, I was telling him like, "It's slippery. Be careful." And then she's like, is it legal? Oh, my God. <laughs> is it legal? Right. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's like, you know, people have this, um, they, can't, they can't divorce the idea of morality and legality. You know, it's like constantly, you know, they, these are, you know, connected at the hip. And, <laughs> and see, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, I used to think that was true, but I'm starting to believe it's, it's, it's not even that they're joined at the hip. It's just they just think legality rules. It doesn't matter what <laughs> they actually think it's a plant's morality because mm -hmm. um, it's morality isn't even a question anymore. A lot of people right, you right, talk right. to when you bring up morality, they kind of look at you funny because they <laughs> well, because they've never <laughs> well because they've never in, in in at least in my experiences and I know for myself too before I before I all this I was introduced to all this stuff, you know, outside of very spiritual or religious people, I don't run into a lot of people that use the term morals or think about morals or if they ever do if you ask them about it they'll give you some like offhand response you know they kind of like wave their hand at you You're like oh of course yeah good from right you know right from wrong blah 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 and like <laughs> kind of trail off and not really give anything specific because you, most people don't consider this and you know i i still get funny looks when i when i try to bring up moral arguments you know mm -hmm. um i mean heck I, I dealt with it with the stuff i'm dealing with <laughs> I, I think we did talk about it on one show where i had to deal with uh where i had to deal with some officers recently and i brought up morality and they were kind of like they kind of <laughs> just they, they really looked at me funny and then they didn't want to talk to me anymore and i was like really just because i wanted to talk about morality did that really freak you out that much but big, oh, but yeah. people but people don't they don't think in those terms so that's why it's not it's not on the forefront. But I was I was also going to say is, you know, with with Donnie, you mentioned about you know being economic, economic uh, economically illiterate, uh, basically when it comes to uh, you know Bernie and his supporters. And it's funny because I've been talking to a lot of people about that recently. It's because anything I, I hear or read about Bernie or people like him when it comes to his his ideas for policies that involves anything in in the field of economics. Um, it's all just the word free is in every right. one of those things. It doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. what it is. Somehow free is worked in there and that's it, it purpose, you know, per, you know, purposely put there to put, have people focus on that. You know, it's a buzzword free. Okay, great. Free. Cause people don't think about where that money comes from or, or even the majority of people who do will say, well, if it's something I like, I'm happy to pay for it mm -hmm. because again, they don't take into consideration. What about all the people that are not happy to do that? And what is the what is the end result of you refusing to do so? Standing up and saying, "No, I'm not going to do this." What is the end result of that? 
people, again, just like with morality, people haven't thought about these things. They've never taken it that far down the line. That's why, you know, I know for myself, and I'm sure it was for mo- pretty much all, all the rest of us, when, the, when, you, when you finally make these realizations, it really is like something, I mean, if, I, for me, it felt like somebody was smacking a brick across my face repeatedly when it finally hit. It was like... <laughs> yep. I, I like to call it the, uh, the Ron Jeremy commemorative dildo lashing. <laughs> <laughs> Because I like to bring out slavery. Anytime somebody starts trying to say something should be legal or it's, is something legal or not, I just jump, well, wh- are you a big fan of slavery? And they're like, Jesus, God, no. <laughs> like, well, slavery was legal. So when you make an argument that says something should be legal, when you haven't really thought about whether or not it has any kind of right or wrong or anything like that attached to it, you're just willing to instantly make something legal without thinking about it this is how slaves are made, and maybe you should not talk. <laughs> and usually the look on their face after that is like you hit them with the Ron Jeremy 14-inch commemorative dildo. <laughs> Just, uh, they don't take it very well, but in true fluffer fashion, they take it pretty well. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, um, uh, Danny, I, I got a response, an interesting response from that. Um, that rebuttal from the uh, uh, from the debate I did with with John Zimmerman, um, where I did bring up that you know slavery was was uh, was legal, and he says no, actually slavery was only in the private institutions. It had nothing to do with the government. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, wait a minute, hold on. Are you deriving this knowledge from government history <laughs> from your government school? <laughs> Where no. are you deriving this knowledge? It, it, no, no, that's well, that's that's straight out of literacy because he is not n- completely illiterate. Well, like, no, that's just look that's, at this document. It makes it clearly makes black folk two thirds of a person. Right. So, but so no, no, they're not thinking just in those no. terms because in his mind he was right and he is partially because the most of the people that I mean there were people in in quote unquote in the government that that did have slaves, but on the whole, the people that were slave owners were private business owners <laughs> so right. technically he's right about that but We're again that's where they're in, in the sense of a special interest you know corporation as today but, right. but but yeah but yeah but still that's where their mind stops yeah it that's was why government sanctioned government was well, the no, one who exactly. got the slave catching parties together well yeah and it's really not different than bailing out a bank if you're right. going to say that you know yeah. legality and morality it's all the same thing then yeah. why are you bitching about the bank bailout you have no high ground to say this law should be a law, but then you you can't say, oh no, not that law. I mean, <laughs> now now we're just on this subjective slip and slide, just covered with shit. That's it makes no sense. It goes nowhere. Uh, it's it's ridiculous, and and that's the part where we all have this real problem because we think logically and we actually think. We're not feeling. We're not bringing preconceived notions, eighth grade civics, and the amount of caffeine they had. You know, to the argument, it's we're thinking and using logic and, and, you know, being consistent and all that stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're such nerds. Yes. Uh, that's, what it is. that's what it is. We're the new nerds. We are. Yes, we, are. <laughs> we really are. We're the, we we're the, really we're the, ge- are. We're the geeks. The guys. We really well, are. it's funny because that's, like, that's what I was saying earlier about the courses that were purposefully was withheld from, at least, uh, you know, in my schooling, I remember, like, the way, and the way they were treated. That's what it was. People that took that, you know, people guys that guys that wanted to take some of those classes were geeks or nerds or mm. you know fags or whatever whatever <laughs> they wanted to call me. Um, it's fu- it's funny coming back full, full circle of that now, <laughs> but the, but, that, but we are we're, that's what we are because now we know this now we know this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's of course it's frustrating, but that that's the whole it's the little dance you got to play with so many of them, unfortunately, because if you press too hard, you go into uh, you know the backfire effect we were talking about earlier, um, where they just you know blinders go up and it's just no matter what you say, it's actually strengthening their argument and they've just totally there's no hope. It's, um, it's I don't know. Usually it's pretty easy to feel people out for their grasp of logic early on in a conversation and you, you know when you shouldn't proceed. Mm. I never I never listen to myself though unfortunately <laughs> and I go way too far with people that just have no concept of where I'm headed. Uh, my, my favorite kind of conversation is the sacrificial virgin because there's one guy who's never talked to an anarchist before and he has no idea what he's doing but there's nine people watching him 
and I am going to sacrifice that motherfucker on the altar of progress, <laughs> and that's just the way it's going to go. And I'm sorry for you, but these other nine people are going to walk away with one piece of knowledge and five more questions that they might answer on them so on their own. Right, but right. you are going to have to be the sacrificial virgin, and I am your proverbial volcano boy. <laughs> it's just the way it is, that's... and I hate I hate that it's like that. I really really hate that it's like that. But I mean. At a certain point, you just don't have any choice. That's yeah. so funny. I, 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 like, I like that analogy. Yeah, <laughs> because, that's really good. Uh, because that's actually, I, and you said you hate, you hate, you hate that it's like that. That's what I actually used to get joy out of. Um, when I would go, when I would debate with people and I would purposefully, ta- I would think I was taking one for the team by just dealing with it with the idiotic bullshit, but I was doing it for the purpose of all the other people reading along. And you could, you know, yep. you could just tell early on that it was how it was going to go. It's like, ah, eh, whatever. I'll play with them for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody somewhere will learn something off of it. That's, yep. you know, because that's Today, kinda... you are my ball of yarn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, you know. I, I just want to go back to the, uh, the the concept of free, you know, free college, free uh, oh, yeah. healthcare, free everything, and uh, I, I, I like to point out to them that um, actually there is a lot of things that are already free thanks to the you know the wonders of the internet, right? You have you know you have Wikipedia, you have YouTube, you have Mises.org, you have you know how many how many different college universities offering their courses for free online, and uh, <laughs> yet people still want you know. Free in the in the sense of you know real world work, uh, resources being um, you know being consumed and and uh, you know people with their with their labor just doing stuff because you think it should be paid for by theft, right? right. <laughs> and and so, and it's like it's like living in the past really you know just it to me it's just indicative of di- of of government being a dinosaur archaic institution that you know is reminiscent of you know medieval times you know barbaric times <laughs> it's like people that haven't even come up to the present like wait a minute a lot of stuff that is beautiful is already free and you're not taking advantage of it you're not using it and you're supporting theft instead <laughs> yeah how, how is it how is it that the people who spend a lot of time like an inordinate amount of time learning about economics and logic and philosophy and being consistent and applying these arguments consistency whether it makes them comfortable or not end up being called the utopians and the people who think that everything is free we're sitting around advocating for the market to determine a price for a good or service and that should be paid voluntarily and we're the we're the utopian people but the people who believe that everything should be free they don't think that's utopian at all how does that how does that come around see you know what Donnie? it's funny that now that you put it that way i now i i have the answer to that question it's projection that's what it is it's not a cop out to call us utopians. They're actually projecting their own hate, their own self hatred onto us because they the bell, realize they do realize on some level that they are the utopians. And the bell has. I'm going to run with. I'm going to run with this. I like this. <laughs> I like this lane of thought. I'm going to run with this from now on for a while. I'm going to see how this plans out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like you know the 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 harshest uh, homophobe anti gay person is actually a closet gay. <laughs> yes, yeah. right? that's like that. Yes. That's that's that study. Truck stop, Charlie. <laughs> exactly. That, that, they, that, there was that study that came out a couple of years ago that I love throwing up when I run into people that their first instinct is to call me homophobic, you know, call me homophobic names as insults when they're mad. Um, you know, I, you deal with that a lot on like if you go to those uh, like the troops or welfare whores and all those type of pages, you know, the people, the, the, the hardcore nationals that come there and get really mad really quickly. Hmm. Um, they're usually the first one to start throwing those terms around. Hmm. Um, and uh, I, that's my first response. I just throw that study up there. <laughs> because it's true, but it's true though. It's, it, it's stuff what is like the that. Study? What is the study? Uh, the, there, I mean, it, somebody wrote an article. I, it wasn't like I, I can't remember if that one was peer re- peer reviewed, but there was a. Co- I think there was another two that were. Um, but basically, they're trying to find out if if homophobic men were really more likely to be gay. <laughs> like, like people actually did study, tried to do studies yeah, on yeah. this. Um, yeah. Because, but it's true because it's so it's it's the same in so many other facets of life where oh, yeah. people. You know, you you project your worst image of yourself onto other people. You know, because most people hate. Most people are are terrified of of figuring out about themselves and learning about themselves that they'd rather throw the bad stuff out there on other people and have to. I mean, I, I mean the, the you know, I mean sometimes they'll completely make it up, but usually somebody has something in them that reminds you of the the horrible thing you feel about yourself, and it's just easier to attack them than attack yourself. So, 
And that's where the bell for class has rung, and we've gone from Econ 101 to Psych 101. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. We're just shifting gears now, and we're moving around all these basic classes that, you I mean, you can't miss it. There it is. It's pure projection. Everything should be free. Ponies for everybody. Never mind all you people who think that you should actually have to work and, and pay for it. I, it, uh, uh, well, yeah, because everything... It's exhausting. It, it's it exhausting. Uh, people just... Uh, yeah, it's like, it, I, I think I remember Bill Maher describing the, the welfare state. He said, um, um, you know, once the people that are pulling the wagon, or, or the people that are sitting in the wagon are outnumbering the people that are pulling the wagon, <laughs> that's when you're going to get, you know, real upheaval <laughs> and collapse and change. Because, I mean, I mean, of course, we don't even think there should be a wagon to begin with, <laughs> or a wagon that's funded by theft, right? Yeah. I mean, of course, no, there's, but I, there's private charities. I, and yeah, go ahead. I think that's a great analogy to understand why everybody hates us. Because not only do we refuse to legitimize the people who are riding in the wagon, but we refuse to push the damn thing either. We're, not, right. we're like the hell with the wagon. Why doesn't everybody get a horse? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't go buy a horse. Yeah, that, look at the wagon. That's utopian. <laughs> that might be the title of the show. Um, <laughs> with that wagon, everybody get a horse. Um, <laughs> um, no, you're right though. It's it's that we are people like us are hated for that, you know, because we don't we don't want it. We 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 obviously don't want any. We don't want to do anything because we just <laughs> we can't possibly have other ideas. We just want to do that. But it's it is it's it's funny. Like you know, we we keep we keep touching on this that more 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 so <laughs> it seems in this, in this episode that they they're so much more utopian than they want us to be. And I I think this projection thing is is really kind of fits actually that. Uh, I was kind of half joking when I said it, but the more I think about it, I'm like, wait a minute, yeah, it, it kind of is. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, because that's what I mean. The, the free stuff is just ridiculous. I mean, you, you have to. It's beyond economic ignorance to actually believe that anybody could be getting anything for free. The way politicians throw those terms around, like you have to. There has to be something even more than that. Like, because even when I was economically illiterate, I still didn't. I still knew there was something more to the whole free idea. <laughs> I think there's even more to the analogy because we're not even like we're not even about the wagon. We're like, hey man, look, innovation. We could build a car. Look, the market will bring you a car. And they're like, but what about the Wainwrights? Who will build the wagons? You're destroying jobs. You're you're you taking our jobs and you're and of course there's only child labor in the factories. And it's like, Jesus, can it can it can you get a break? Actually, that's a great that's a great uh, analogy because I often talk about um you know, like, you know, subsidizing perverse behavior, which is, you know, basically every government, every government uh, action and, you know, the bailouts and things like that. So I say, you know, if if you, you know, if you don't really question, you know, um, subsidies or bailouts or, you know, uh, favors or, you know, uh, any kind of political favoritism, then going back in time, right, we had horse and buggy and then the, the car came. So what would have happened if the federal government said, you know what? These people who are making the, the you know, have their com their companies in the horse and buggy industry, they have families, they have kids, they have to feed these kids. Let's subsidize those people <laughs> and try to destroy this evil car industry <laughs> that's trying to, yeah. you know, <laughs> replace <Yeah>. them. <laughs> what would have happened, right? That would have been retarding progress, which is basically <laughs> what government does anyway. But it, it's amazing how... You know, people don't realize that every government action destroys a portion of the, you know, the free market of the of voluntary interaction between consensual individuals. So I think that's important to point out. They still are doing it. There's a there's a good movie on YouTube called The Thorium, and it's about how you can actually have nuclear power without, you know, all of our all, the current nuclear energy paradigm kind of rotates around nuclear weapons. It's what do we do with you know uranium and plutonium, and Instead of looking at other things that are far better suited for nuclear power, but have zero in, zero use in a, in a nuclear weapon, and uh, I, I I'm like it, starting to starting to look at it a lot like uh, a, a cannabis. You know, you grow hemp, and and hemp has all of these industrial purposes that the paper industry doesn't want to hear about, and the oil industry doesn't want to hear about, and uh, there, there's a couple other a couple other major industries trying to keep hemp out of out of being grown. And t uh, marijuana, or uh, not marijuana, cannabis. My, my bad. I'm, I'm I'm getting out of the old ways. I'm getting old ways. There you go. Good I man. caught it. Good I man. caught Good it. <laughs> but but it, it has so many medical purposes that big yes. farmer doesn't want to deal with. And uh, it, even 
the claims that uh, oh you know they're they're starting to find out that alcohol is actually the gateway drug. It's not weed. It's alcohol that makes you want want uh, cocaine and and all these other things. And uh, thorium is very. It's a, it's a really good. It's kind of long. It's it's not the uh, you know you might have to do it in a couple of sessions. But I mean, just dude goes through so many ways. Like like uh, the amount of or, uh, uranium in the Earth's crust is very similar to the amount of platinum. But here we are burning it for energy. Can you imagine burning platinum for energy? Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of obtuse. Whereas you look at the amount of thorium in the in the Earth's crust, and I mean, it's exponentially higher. Like I want I want to say uranium is like point zero zero one eight percent of the Earth's crust, whereas thorium is like point one. Wow. I mean, orders of magnitude. There's it's so much of it, and and there are so many ways to do it. And there, you know, they actually had a molten salt reactor. You know, working in the '50s, but it wasn't going to produce. It, it it wasn't along the nuclear paradigm, so it couldn't get the funding. It couldn't get the love, and and now it's starting to come back around because it's way more efficient than anything else. It's more efficient than current nuclear. It's more efficient than solar and wind. I mean, it's a very dense form of energy, very similar to uranium, and uh, there there's just so many things that we have either been balls out lied to or just. Had, just never knew about, and we're starting to learn. And you know what? It's the internet. The same way that the printing press killed monarchies the world over, the internet is really, really starting to show governments for for exactly what they are. And you know, they're just a they're just a gang. They're a bunch of middlemen that operate exactly like the mafia, and they are providing no value at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh no, I I was I was just going to agree. I mean, that's that that puts it pretty well because they 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 really are. And and I I agree with you. The internet definitely um is is helping in that regard. But yeah, it's it's true. There's there's so many things that you know, we I mean, we I know we joke about it. I know plenty of other people have made jokes about, it, you know, and 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 other people have claimed that there's evidence of certain things being held back. Um, but you can see like, you know, like I remember growing up as a kid and, and looking at, you know, watching the Jetsons on TV and then, and, you know, things like Star Trek and all that stuff. And you imagine all these things that are supposed to, you know, be in the future. Um, or even like, you know, when the second back to the future came out and that was supposed to be the future, you know, that was supposed to be around now. Um, yeah. you know, and you see all those things as a kid and you're like, wow, all these, these things, and then you grow up and. Oh, you know, that was just a pipe dream. And then you hear about, <laughs> no, wait a minute, there's certain things. And now here we are. There's, there, you know, you look at back at Star Trek and things like the, the little calm thing they have. Well, all right, now you have a iPhone you can hold in your hand and you can talk to people all the way around the world on this little yeah. handheld device. And you can, order, you know, do all these amazing things with, you know, like yeah. the, these things are here. But what, what else, how, not only what, you know, not only what else has it, haven't we been told about, but how many things have been retarded in their progress coming to us that have literally held us back because of people's idea of utopia, which was the only way to bring on this progress was to have some sort of government, <laughs> which, right. which, yeah. which continues to grow and which continues to crush innovation and, and progress. Um, and then have, you know, and then have favoritism and corporatism and all these things that, certain people get into place with their products and when a better one comes along, well, no, it, exactly as you were describing before, Danelle, you, you, we can't have that happen, you know? <laughs> I mean, that, that's, what, that's what ended up having hemp and cannabis uh, meet illegal in the first place. It was people like, uh, what's his name, with the, the paper magnet from the, the 30s, uh, well, William Randolph Hearst, um, and, people like, and people like that who wanted to protect their industries. And they're the ones who ran, you know, Hearst was the worst because he had the yellow journalism that was running stuff like all the anti-cannabis um, uh, propaganda and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it was even harder to get hemp because, I mean, well, actually, they just tied hemp to cannabis because nobody knew the difference at, at that point. <laughs> yep. um, but again, well, the people that, the people that matter did, the people in the paper industry that were going to well, have yeah. completely useless, pro, you know, uh, well, no, completely useless pa presses that wouldn't do... Uh, that were, they, they were all set up for wood pulp. They couldn't do hemp, and all the, so all those people fought back. It was just the, the masses. I know. I, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I went. The masses. Yeah, of course, those people, the ones who the ones who wanted to stop it and did right. through talking to their friends in the government and getting the yep. favorable re regulations and all that stuff. And 
yep. you know, and again, that, that's somebody else's version of utopia, keeping all of these things away from us. I mean, the cannabis thing for, for me, especially, has, has always been a big issue because, I mean, I've, I've been a regular smoker since I was, uh, I actually started late in the game. I think my 22nd birthday is when I really started. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, I just, I, I've always been a recreational user and uh, I've never seen a problem with it. And I've now seen so many, I've known people, I, people that I know myself, you know, that I know personally have been helped th from it, you know, from different things uh, for different, you know, for different ailments and stuff like that. When it, they were finally, quote unquote, allowed to get it in their area, you know, which is, which is so ridiculous. Like you see there's certain legislations going around in the current utopia in different states where they're, they're trying to get it, you know, law, like, Laws have to be passed for people at end of life stage to be able to use anything they like. At, at that point, if you want to use Drano because you think it will help you, <laughs> right? Who the who the fuck is anybody to tell you? Is no? that le is that legal? Well, ex exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like, there, like the fact that there is actually, I saw you had to see that legislation going around. Like, is so insane. Like, yeah. okay, these people have not only been like, they can not only just tell you they've been ter they're terminal. There is documentation from the doctors and everything saying they're terminal patients. They're definitely going to die in like six months or less. But the law says we're not allowed to give. You're not a, like. It's so insane because I mean the the whole I mean I so again I've been arguing this for a, the better part of my life because I've always been a pro kind of you know even before I smoked I was pro kind of you know just in general I was pro because I was I always I always had that libertarian bent to me why should it be anybody's business who, who what I put or anybody puts in their body you know I always had that mindset so and then as I got older and learned about the the quote unquote possible medical benefits because at that point, you know, back in the eighties and nineties before, um, it's, it really started to take off. Nobody was getting to use it anywhere for anything. So there was, and there was no studies that were allowed to be done. Um, but you can just look back on the history books and you see how it was, uh, you know, what, before it became illegal, it was used, like it was listed in pharmaceutical books as like, <laughs> as a, as a remedy or a, or at least a, you know, a pain reliever or something for like a myriad of different problems. Yeah. Like how did it all of us, you know, again, the, the wonders of the utopia that is government one second, something's perfectly legal and people are using, are you able to use it to try to help better themselves? Mm -hmm. And the next day, nope, sorry, we're going to throw you in jail if you attempt to better yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know what? Listen, and where are the utopians? If you're out there, <laughs> if you're out there in your terminal, please take me. Take some advice, okay? <laughs> as soon as you get that terminal diagnosis, go and find your local weed dealer, okay? And tell him you're going to run all the dangerous shit for him, just for whatever you're going to use, your own personal usage. <laughs> and when you get busted, don't pay for anything. Don't pay for any of this. High, high, don't pay for medical care. Go to jail and let them pay for it. <laughs> They want to be assholes. They're not going to let you smoke a dime bag because you're dying. Fine, go and die on their dime. Make them take care of you the whole time. Don't burn out your resources. Burn out theirs. Mm -hmm. You're going to die anyway. Take one for the team on this one and <laughs> stick them with the bill. Stick them with the bill. You know what? What really uh, <clears throat> infuriates me about uh, you know when you think about how much innovation has been destroyed. Um, you know, it's like, you know, you know, Bastia's seen in the unseen, you know, all of the force that's been instituted by law, by regulation, you know, by taxation, it's like completely siphoning away the productivity and, uh, you know, and, and the creativity of, of people who want to contribute real value to society. And when you, when you, when I, you know, when I understand that, then it, it really, you know, deeply, uh, you know, saddens me to think how much, how, how many, uh, you know, maybe life-saving or just, just you, know, in, in, you know, ways that our standards of living could be infinitely increased? <laughs> um, how much of that has been destroyed because of all that force that has been, um, you, know, uh, you, know, pointed, you know, guns pointed at, you know, peaceful people, entrepreneurs, you know, consumers and, you know, minimum wage workers or, or you know, it, you know, it's, it's just really sad. Like talking about the energy industry, like, you know, nuclear, nuclear energy basically primarily used for 
uh, weapons, right? So what could be a, a really um, positive use for that? And I think, and I just wonder, like, what could have people have, you know, what, what could they have imagined nuclear energy could really do? And I, and I think, you know, we could have, <laughs> I, I don't know, we could have, maybe we could have mastered the, you know, the, the weather by now. Maybe we could, <laughs> maybe we could have harnessed the sun in a, in a completely different way. But no, if you want solar panels, it's so expensive that you have to get government subsidies in order to get it because nobody can afford it but i mean i mean i mean people people want it because it's like it's like natural and everything but the the idea that people have to steal money from other people to get it i think that doesn't that doesn't really uh click with them <laughs> you know they're like well it's good so if I, you know if i get a if, if i get a, a tax break or if i get a subsidy you know and and it's a little bit cheaper for me then i guess it's okay because it's still good for the environment but wait, wait a minute is that coming out of out of violence and theft yeah but that's okay because it's good for the environment <laughs> you know it's like right. forget about forget about my neighbor it's good the for the just, trees. <laughs> the, the, ends, the ends justify the means, man. Don't right, you know that? Right. You know what? I, I had a talk with Dave a while back. You, you're, you're saying that they're, they're stifling the, uh, the creativity that could be. They're not even using the creativity that is as, to its fullest. And, and my argument for this, uh, Dave, Dave almost lost his mind when I told him this. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the oil spill in the Gulf. If I was the president of the United States... I would have shifted a 10, a 10 kiloton nuclear warhead down there and I would have melted that whole thing shut. Now you're saying, oh, that's a nuclear weapon. In 5,000 feet of water, it's not a whole lot of anything, really. And instead of having a million barrels of oil floating around, uh, killing wildlife, covering hundreds of miles of shoreline and all that, you could take just the stuff that's being done and still use it more creatively, but it's really not. So, I mean, ne never mind the stuff that we're missing. Why aren't even we using the things that can be used to, you know, uh, uh, when you're like, I understand that's a, you know, a worst case scenario. Okay, fine. <laughs> what else, what else are you saving this nuclear weapon for? Are you really expecting the Russians to come sc screaming through the fold of gap? Like that was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Get over it. The world is changing and government, you've, you've pointed out that a oh, hundred times, government is always 25 years behind. They're always trying to preserve what was five years ago. They're never really getting into where do we need to be in five years. Well, of course, because if you, if you start thinking ahead, it gives people the opportunity to see how, how much you're actually not needed. When, yeah. uh, when they ha you know, if, if, you, if you try to, if you purposefully re retard things and, and convince people that you're, you're still needed because this is the way things, you know, the, it, it becomes a short-term appe appeal to antiquity. Where you have to, you know, this is the way it's been done. We, this is what we, we have to keep doing it. But we're, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. Where these things will come. <laughs> well, it may, what, what would happen? You know, I mean, there, there's all the, the, the talk, conspiracy, whatever it is behind, you know, behind Tesla and what, what happened to him and what, you know, what, what his ideas were that may or may not have been, um, actually been able to be brought to fruition. And, um, you know, how many more Teslas were out there? that mm -hmm. just never even got any prominence because mm -hmm. government just stepped all over them because somebody else in a competing industry um, or in a or or on this or on a same path like like te like uh, Tesla and Edison you know Ed Edison got all the all the money right isn't, isn't that how it worked mm -hmm. he got all the oh, he got all the government grants and stuff like that he he went out that you know like how many more people how many more Teslas were there in that in that aspect how many more people like him were just out there on their own and just getting stepped on by people in you know, like, like you know, with the paper industry not wanting the people, not wanting the hemp industry to take off because that would, that would supplant them. You know, how many? You're right. It's it, yep. the the numbers are absolutely untold. We, we'll never have any idea. Um, which, oh, we, which all well, oh, goes you know, kind of goes back to that. Uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, Higgs quotes. Uh, with the end of it, you know, how Arnakers didn't do this and didn't do this. You know, and that's why the burden of proof because it is the. the all, all we all, people look at us and think we're talking about utopia. It's like, well, no, there's some pretty good ideas. They've been put into action throughout time, and uh, they're still, you know, on some level, we people live in an anarchic state now, and they don't even realize it. Um, so these things are not just completely hypothetical, but you're putting against the state, which just has all this history of horrible, horrible, horribleness. <laughs> yep, uh, you know. Uh, I'll I'll beat the the utopian drum one more time. You know we're saying this 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 functional system that you you think is not utopian that it's this pragmatic 
beautiful thing that's bringing forth uh, civilization. This week was the anniversary of gay rights, or uh, the women getting to vote. That was the anniversary this week. But it's the same story arc for, uh, for gays getting to marry. Um, which group of people was preventing these actions to begin with? The same group of people who, after overwhelming support to the point where the people are ready to just ignore the current law anyway, then show up, they change the law, and they declare they've done such a good thing <laughs> for society. We're moving yeah. forward because government has allowed it to move forward. We're trailblazing the way. No, you're not. <laughs> you're the people who are causing the problem. You are the stumbling block. You know, the government is a self-licking lollipop. Like, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, no, There's no two ways about it. You might not understand that a lot because of the economic. Uh, it takes a lot to learn the economics and learn how each of those actions is really functionally retarded. But... But there it is. If you if you couldn't if you don't want to do econ or economics and you don't want to do all the logic shit, just think about women getting the right to vote. Who stopped them to begin with, and who suddenly declared themselves the victor when they did it, and how? It was already it was already what people were going to do anyway. So really, it, I mean, just wake up. It you know the the status paradigm really is utopia. Anarchy sucks. It's hard and it's gritty and you might not, you know, somebody might break your window and you might just end up paying for it in the long run. It sucks. But you know what? All that shit happens now under a system of oppressive, cronyistic nonsense that is literally killing people. Yeah, so um, uh, so I, I think we should just uh, finish up uh, with our final remarks. I just want to uh, finish up by saying, uh, you know, going back to Jeremy, what you were saying about, um, you know, the, all the, you know, the creators and inventors that might have been that have been destroyed, you know, because of regulation, because of laws, um, like Tesla, like people like Tesla, um, you know, and and uh, there's a great documentary by this guy um, uh, Gary Null. He's a uh, he's like a health advocate. He writes a bunch of books and he makes award winning documentaries. He made one called um, uh, the um, the FDA's Cult of Tyranny, right? And it's basically all about how you know so many different um, you know anti basically uh, you know uh, people who discovered you know natural holistic cures to cancer you know that's kind of the funny thing when people say you know in the future we're going to find the cure for cancer and i'm like wait 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 just just remove all the violence and i think it's already been found <laughs> you just don't know yeah. about it because you didn't you know you didn't hear about it because it wasn't told in your government school but <clears throat> but uh you know people <clears throat> like um uh, Mac, you know, there's a Gerson therapy, you know, there's Essiac therapy, there's, you know, all different kinds. It's just amazing when I when I learned about that. And there's there's another great documentary, um, which is um, uh, it's like the Forbidden Cures, you know, the Forbidden Cures of Cancer, and it's all these people. And and if you read about them, they all end basically the same. You know, they they gain prominence. You know, they they find this new method, it's successful. And then, you know, then the FDA comes crashing down on top of them and then they have a mysterious accident and all their, you know, records and their, and their uh, you know, their, their cases, uh, their case uh, files get destroyed, burned, and then they're blacklisted, censored, and <laughs> no, but you never hear about them again. And that happens time and time again. And, you know, talking about cancer, like, like th there is still the Gerson therapy, which is, you know, it's an all, um, you know, holistic, uh, you know, on raw mm. organic vegetable fruit juices, things like that, enemas. But it's illegal. It's illegal to first person to do the Gerson therapy in the United States, right? They, but, but they do do it in Mexico. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm like telling people, if, if this is so, like, if, if it's so dangerous, why are people flocking to it? Like, people are in their deathbed and they're flocking to Mexico. They don't want to go the legal route, which is, you know, basic chemo, chemo radiation surgery, which kill, you know, <clears throat> so many more people that, 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 that are, that, you know, the government is willing to admit. <laughs> and it's just, it's just amazing. Like, you know, the F, just the FDA alone, you know, how much, how much, uh, you know, you know, um, medical innovation has been destroyed because of these arcane institutions. It's just, it just really, really depresses me when I think about it. But, uh, but it really, you know, it gives me all the more, um, you know, impetus and drive to, uh, you know, to do what we do. So, you know, spread the message of liberty. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it is, it is, it's, it's scary and sad to think about stuff like that. Like what, you know, I mean, 
to you know to put on the to put on the tinfoil hat for a second there was there was a time when i was uh, when i believe the the you know all the stuff that gets thrown around about you know the, the government creating most of these drugs and force you know mm-hmm. not this drug the diseases and forcing them on people you know, like i mean obviously there was stuff like the uh what was it the tuskegee experiments where they actually did Tus- tuskegee inj- yeah yeah, it wasn't it wasn't they were actually injecting them and with syphilis yeah, with, and stuff with the like black, that. The black people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like they they were, um, so they you know I mean there is that there is those examples, but people I've you know if you go full blown conspiracy, I've heard people you know with with AIDS and cancer and yeah, right. oh they they created it and they're just waiting for the to you know to eventually turn the spigot off and be like okay it's gone you know we have the we have the cure. Um, yeah. But even if you don't think of it from that angle, if you just look at it from the other side of what actually has happened, you don't and yes, even need to think about that, right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like it, the reality is actually even worse. Like it's people look right. at the conspiracy stuff, like oh that's ridiculous, it's horrible. It's like no, the reality is worse, man. Look at it. Like look at how much stuff has been held off, and like right. it's like even as simple as the. Uh, even get away from medication for a second, just from like the, the, the turnaround that's had to happen in the past couple of years about eggs and bacon and butter. Like those have like people who have been not using this stuff for years because they were told by people like the FDA that it was bad for you and you shouldn't eat this <laughs> stuff. And, it was, and like, and eat this margarine, which is like right, killing right, people. And right, like, like, you know, right. and just like, and like stay away from bacon and it's hard, like all this stuff. And it's like, and now all these, what people think are these fad diets like paleo and all this stuff are coming and people are like, no, no, you can eat this stuff. It's good for you. Trust. It's good for you. And now all of a sudden it's the FDA is like, oh, we, wait, 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 we had to make a mistake. Uh, we, we, or they didn't even say it. it's like new information is, is like, you know, it's not like, oh, no, we just gave you totally gave you a snow job because it helped whoever it helped somebody at the time mm-hmm. to out to outlaw these things and get rid of these things, you know, like um, but it's just, yeah, like you see it all the time and it's like when you th- if you actually sit and think about it what what else is out there what could have been it's it's scary because we could have been so much further and 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 again these diseases and especially if you're somebody who's had somebody who's lost somebody due to one of these diseases then you think about it you get even more mad <laughs> you know yep. i've lost a few people to cancer it's like yeah this information some of it was out there and it was he- kept from us like yeah kind of messed up you know <laughs> So yeah, I mean, but that that is the uh, the pit of despair we find ourselves in when dealing with the idiots and statism. Unfortunately, um, they keep retarding progress and looking at us like we're the uh, the crazy ones for actually wanting to move forward. Um, because you know, to go back to what we touched on at the beginning of the show about how all all forms of government are essentially a utopia in somebody's eyes, like you know. Even if you want to believe that government is necessary, well, look at the trajectory and, you know, what what supposedly was built here was supposed to be the freest yet and it went horribly wrong. So mm-hmm. isn't, the next logic, what, isn't the next logical step to keep getting freer because that's the path everybody was on anyway? So, <laughs> you know, uh, like I said, I, to, to again reiterate what I said earlier, at the very beginning, the whole idea that um, it's utopian can be dis- they, you know, taken apart very easily. Um, by pointing out that every system is somebody's form of utopia or by pointing out that, you know, no, freedom is dangerous. I get that. Uh, I'm willing to take that risk. So it's not really a utopia. Um, But even if you still want to stay stuck in that mindset, um, if you can at least agree that these ideas, even if you want to say they sound good on paper, like because you get that a lot, too. It's like, oh, yeah, it sounds good on paper, but this is the real world. It's not going to work here in the real world. (laughs) You know, more, more, more soft, more soft. Those are people that say, well, that's that sounds good, but I'm a realist. Exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, any any variation of that. that oh it's because it's, it's a it's a put down. It's a it's put like a, down it's like a of soft, you. A soft insult, right? right? Yeah. It's it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's 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 a it's a subtle it's a subtle insult yeah. and and uh, and uh, a deflection all at the same time. And it's not you know it's not an it's a it's a it's not an argument, <laughs> not an argument. Sorry. Um, so, but you know when they you know if even if you come to that point, well, okay. So can, we can at least agree that this would be the ideal. Why the hell aren't you willing to work towards the ideal? <laughs> That's what I don't get about people. Like, even if you want to think that we're idealists, right. if you agree with the ideal on paper, <laughs> why wouldn't you want to work towards it? 
you know, I mean, does that really I mean, make us the crazy? How, how crazy are we for wanting to work towards the ideal that we agree on versus you who agree to it but are willing to stay in somebody else's utopia? I mean, I, mean, I, I agree that easier. rape is immoral, but I mean, it's just but, ideal to expect everybody. So <laughs> I, I should be able to rape if I want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, stop being. <laughs> Somebody's going to rape, so it might as well be me. <laughs> 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, Lay down. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boil it down. Super simple and super <laughs> stupid. A anarchist logic is, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he's he eats for the rest of his life. And status logic is, make a man a fire, he's warm for the rest of the night. Light a man on fire, he's warm for the rest of his life. <laughs> Now, this sounds really similar, but it's really important to understand the difference. It's super, super important. Oh, man. <laughs> Have you ever done stand-up comedy? <laughs> no. No, dude. I had to make myself happy in a dirt hole with, with nothing. Oh, man. With nothing for a long time. So, and I, I, like, I love to joke around. I love the kid, but really think about that because there are people out there who are like, that's right, man. He'll be good for the rest of his life. <laughs> And, and it's painful, but there it is. Like, it really is that it sounds good logic, but it doesn't, it doesn't follow. <laughs> it, it really doesn't in the end. And if you don't know the difference, there you are. Yeah. There you are. You just literally don't get it. So don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be that guy. That's all I can say. <laughs> Uh, and one more thing I'd like to say is that uh, you know, when, when people you know, talk about, you know, what about the rose? What about the poor? What about the sick? And I'm like, well, what does that have to do with me wanting to keep what I earned <laughs> and that which I voluntarily traded and, how, and being a good, decent, moral person? What does the roads have to do with that? <laughs> I'm, just, yep. I'm just a human being that treats my neighbor with respect, the same respect that I want to be treated. And that's it. Forget about the roads. Forget about <laughs> health care. For, forget about who's going to, you know, China and Russia. <laughs> and, just, and let me tell you the flaw in that logic. Because the guy next door who's completely genuinely okay with paying taxes is absolutely okay with treating you the same way as he treats himself. He really is okay with you paying taxes. He really, really is. So when you have to do it, it's just like tough shit. I do it. I'm okay with it. Why aren't you? So, so that's really not going to work on that guy. Yeah. 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 So, uh, right. <laughs> Everyone who's a, who's a status is a is a utopian. That's the that's the basic is the true is the true utopian. <laughs> that's the basic message. So um, awesome conversation. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, so this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. If anyone wants to donate, uh, we accept uh, Bitcoin, PayPal, and uh, and you can also donate through our Patreon page, which uh, which we uh, encourage everyone to visit. Um, Dave made a great uh, introductory video over there, so so check him out. He's the uh, the mascot for our Seeds of Liberty logo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave, for 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 posting yourself as a silhouette. We are we are deeply in your debt. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Dave is my spirit animal. <laughs> do not do not shave that thing, Dave, because it's making it's making you uh, immortalized <laughs> in history. <clears throat> you can oh, actually uh, just to say you can follow us on YouTube, um, iTunes, and Stitcher, and Facebook. You can find all those links on theseedsofliberty dot com. So, um, so this has been the the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace. Out.